one of the predominantly rural districts of central India, some strange things are happening. Every morning, 25-year-old Deepak Sharma of Dhar district begins his day with prayers. But the gods seem to have changed in Dhar. कंप्यूटर की पूजा करने का हमारा जो उद्देश्य है कि क्या है कि कंप्यूटर को हम एक तरह से लक्ष्मी मानते हैं क्योंकि क्योंकि रोजगार मिला हुआ उससे ही क्या है कि लक्ष्मी कमाई जाती है तो लक्ष्मी जो भगवान के रूप में तो उसकी पूजा करते हैं तो एक तरह से कि ये समझते धन है ये हमारे लिए ग्रामीण क्षेत्र में सरस्वती जी जो है उनकी पूजा करते हैं वो विद्या देती है उस तरीके से ये भी क्या है कि एक शिक्षा का माध्यम है तो उस तरीके से हम इसकी पूजा करते हैं इट इज लिटिल वंडर दैट दीपक वर्शिप्स द पर्सनल कंप्यूटर ऑन हिस्स टेबल टिल अयर अगो ही वॉज अ स्कूल टीचर अर्निंग अप टू अ थाउजेंड रुपीज पर मंथ Today the computer has increased his earning sixfold. Not just that, it also enabled him to fulfill his lifelong desire to do something constructive for his village. Deepak is an important player in a unique experiment being conducted in India's hinterland to bridge the digital divide. He and others like him are sparking a tiny revolution across rural India. In the year 2000, the government of the Central Indian state of Madhya Pradesh started an intranet service project called Gyan Doot, which translates as Ambassador of Knowledge. This intranet network connects villages to the district headquarters and offers the villagers a range of online services. People like Deepak Sharma qualified during a fortnight-long training of village boys in operating a computer and became the first operators of a suchanale or information center as these rural cyber kiosks are called. Through 33 information kiosks, the mostly tribal and agricultural population of this otherwise backward district of Madhya Pradesh gets connected with the administration. Whether it is a faulty hand pump or the prices of crops, the people of Dhar have learned that the machine in the Suchanale is a guarantee of official action. Infotech has gone grassroots and begun to transform the lives of rural folk. Gyandut is wiring up villages, disseminating information, simplifying procedures and eliminating middlemen. The basic purpose was to take information technology to the masses. The benefits also, which uh, accompanied it, the uh, kiosks were mostly community-owned when it all started, and uh, the number of villagers which were coming to the kiosk was limited to very few numbers. Uh, there was a kind of apprehension towards the computer as a machine and information technology as kind of a new technology. But we were very confident right from the beginning that the usage will increase. Not only is the usage growing rapidly, but this digital empowerment is also prodding the slow administration. 87-year-old Rami Bai is a destitute widow living on a pension, but last year in July she suddenly stopped receiving the pension. This went on for two months. Her two neighbors, 75-year-old Nadan Bai and 78-year-old Ram Tu Bai, also found themselves in the same situation. These three helpless old women had no clue about who to approach in the administration. Then one day they heard about the machine in Deepak's kiosk and decided to approach him with their problem. इन्होंने यहां यहां पे आए और मेरे को उनकी समस्या बताई और मैंने उनको बोला कि आप कंप्लेन्स यहाँ से शिकायत भेजिए हम आपकी शिकायत धार जिला पंचायत को पहुँचाएंगे आपका निराकरण जरूर होगा तो उन्होंने 
कंप्लेंट यहाँ से की उनकी शिकायत हमने भेजी उस शिकायत के तहत उनको सात दिन में रिप्लाई मिला और सात दिन के तुरंत बाद उनको उनकी पेंशन जो दो माह से बंद थी वो चालू हुई The three old ladies paid Deepak five rupees each and made him email their complaint to the administration. Within a week, the government officials landed up at the village to sort the matter out. It was clear that even the most backward sections of the population were effectively using a technology they had never even heard of. The farmers they may not understand how the electricity travels to their house, but they very efficiently and very easily use the electric power. Similarly, they may not understand uh, what kind of uh, radio magnet, uh, uh, how the uh, electromagnetic waves come to the radio or transistor, but they very efficiently use it. So basically, it is not the uh, ability to understand and uh, uh, harness the information technology, but basically the basic issue was how it becomes more beneficial to the community. And if they understand it is beneficial to them, we were very confident right from the beginning that they will adopt it. Since Gyan Doot kicked off a year ago, over 6,000 email complaints have poured into the central server of the district administration at Thar. This project has proved that information is empowerment, and digital technology today is throwing up the perfect means of providing easy access to information to the remote villages in India. The basic appeal of the whole network is that it is community-based. It contains the local content. it is based on a technology which is universally present and it is economically financially viable and sustainable and this makes it a unit project which is a running functioning kind of a uh, network where the private enterprising capacities of the kiosk manager is the front line uh, from where the information technology uh, transfers to the community But Dhar is just one of the remote areas where a click of the mouse has transformed the lives of the underprivileged. The grassroots infotech storm is spreading and the waves have reached the shores of Pondicherry in South India. Like most of coastal India, the erstwhile French territory of Pondicherry is also dotted with fishing hamlets like Veerampattinam. For centuries, these fishing communities have been venturing out into the Bay of Bengal in their traditional boats to bring in the daily catch. Over generations, every father has handed down to his son their knowledge of the sea and how to predict storms in order to safeguard their lives. But this knowledge was not always able to predict mother nature's moods accurately. Sometimes by the time these fishermen came to know of an impending storm, it was too late. But not too far away in Chennai, efforts were being made at the MS Swaminathan Research Center that were to change the lives of the fishermen in Pondicherry. When we set up our foundation here in Chennai 11 years ago, one of our major aims was to use technology as a means of promoting economic social and gender equity because right from the industrial revolution in europe technology has been one of the important factors causing a greater rich poor divide between technology haves and technology have nots the idea was how do we really harness technology as an ally in the equity movement both gender and social equity for this purpose we decided what gandhi ji called antyodaya or start from bottom up the poorest person we call it a pro poor pro nature pro woman orientation to technology dissemination and that is how the information village started every morning 32 year old ramakrishnan along with the other fishermen prepares to set out for the day's trolling But unlike his father, he will do more than just scan the skies to guess about possible storms. 
He will go to the cyber kiosk in his village because in four villages in Pondicherry, internet has become a part of daily life. In these information villages, as they are called, women and children browse the web regularly and easily. Latest information and communication technology has given them the power to bargain a better price for their produce, get information on 145 government schemes intended for the poor, and even check out the weather forecast for fishing. Whether it is bus timing, whether it is wave heights in the sea, or marketing information, or management information, or all what we call an entitlement database, that is all the government schemes available. There are 145 schemes in Pandicherry or more now, which are intended for the poor, those below the poverty line. They have been disaggregated by gender, age, class and caste. Each family has a household entitlement, a small passbook, in which they know what are all the schemes they can access and how do they access it and so on. Ramakrishnan scans the computer-generated weather graph of the Bay of Bengal at the local information shop. The computer center is very much useful and because of this computer center and the people here in this village and they are not uh, well versed in this computer line but everyone have chance to go to the computer center and learn the computer. Now they are learning computer very easily and they are very well uh, accustomed to the computer and because of this computer center they say and their lives are saved and they feel it is a great assistance for them in their life to keep them always safe giving information. The information shop is connected to a central hub center which acts as a value addition exchange point for collecting and providing a variety of local specific information. Most of this database is available in Tamil, the local language. Each day, the project staff downloads a map that shows the wave heights and wind directions in the Bay of Bengal. Some villagers are illiterate, so information such as weather reports is downloaded as real audio files which is played over loudspeakers dotted across the village. As Rama prepares to set out for sale, the loudspeakers along the coast crackle to life, announcing the fine weather forecast. But this is not always the case. In October 1999, a huge cyclone began to build up in the Bay of Bengal and began to head towards the eastern coast of the Indian Peninsula. This storm was detected on the internet by the hub center and warnings were announced in all the information villages across Pondicherry. Three months ago, and there was an instruction given by the Emma Swamid the Research Foundation Center, Iram Batinam, that due to a cyclone is going to arrive within 24 hours, no fisherman should enter into the if they enter into the sea, they will face the death, so they must be very careful and if we give you severe instruction and please do not enter into the sea, cyclone is going to appear heavily. Secure in the knowledge that a storm in the seas will not catch them by surprise, Rama and the other fishermen set out for the high seas. However, the danger is not always over. Once they are miles away from land, there is always a danger of running into a crisis. To tackle this problem, they use satellite handsets provided by the foundation to communicate with the hub center in case of an emergency. With only a touch of a button, the message gets transmitted via the satellite to the hub center. I think if you adopt this particular model, that people have a sense of ownership, that the knowledge given is demand-driven, and not purely supply driven, then you find it is also digital divide is not only one, uh, bridging the digital divide can not only empower them with new skills, new information, but also it's a very powerful tool in bridging the gender divide.
In the village of Embalam, most of the women have traditionally been agricultural workers. They wanted to know the prices of crops in the nearby markets as they received part of their wages in grain. When they saw the success of the information shop in nearby Virampartinam, they approached the foundation to set up a kiosk in their own village. We don't go to any village where caste, community, religion, something divides them. They say nobody should come to this center. So it's only where everyone is welcome. So the knowledge becomes a unifying factor. And by starting with the Antyodhya model of bridging the digital divide, we have learned it's a very powerful tool. These IT applications at the grassroots level is not only going a long way in bridging the digital divide, but is also bridging the gender divide in our country. Before setting up the information shops, the MS Swaminathan Research Foundation required participating villagers to agree to certain criteria. One of these criteria was to ensure that at least half of the trained volunteer operators are women. The gender divide in the villages is very strong. Today, because the women control many of these centers, uh, somehow they themselves choose, not that we don't choose, the men choose mostly women. Uh, in one play, Embalam village, the priest found that the, the, the knowledge center was in a temple. He felt, you know, that he should also learn. He said, you teach me also. And I, where people come here, they ask me what is this center, I'm not able to say. So there's a tremendous enthusiasm. The Embalam information shop is now housed in a room adjacent to the village temple. But unlike the temple, where certain sections of the population are not allowed to enter, this shop has its doors open to all. Not only do all the women workers come here to access all kinds of information, but all the computer operators are also women. The rural communities are discovering digital technology and new ways of conducting business. 70-year-old Lakshman Singh and 65-year-old Rajaram are local farmers from the remote village of Nawasa. Till a year ago, the two of them would have to endure an hour-long back-breaking bus journey just to find out crop prices in the nearest wholesale market. Then the middlemen who would buy their crops would pay at least 20% less. But Infotech has opened up new worlds for them. The two old farmers stroll down to the nearest cyber kiosk and at a click of a button, they are able to access the rates of all the nearby markets. For just five rupees, the operator, Bhagwan Singh Rathor, enables them to know which market will give them the highest price for their produce. The fading away of the middlemen is possibly the best thing Infotech is doing to these wired villages. When we plan out the services and plan out the villages where the kiosk will be put up, we went to the community, discussed with them. As for the services, we asked them a very simple question. We asked them for what services they would pay for, what is kind of information which is so crucial in their life, for which they are ready to pay some amount. And they came out with a lot of answers, which also helped us in formulating the uh, services uh, on, the, on, the, on the network. The Infotech revolution is not only trying to bridge the gender divide, but it is also invading some of the sealed realms of the closely knitted rural society. Finding a suitable spouse has always been a source of concern for parents of a young girl. But if you have three daughters of marriageable age, you definitely needed some help. For Munshi Khan, a farmer in Dhamanda village, this help came in the form of the nearby cyber kiosk. As part of the online services provided to the villagers, Gyandut has also started a matrimonial page, and this has received a lot of attention. <laughs> Not only did the matrimonial site lead him to a suitable boy for his eldest daughter, Shabana, but with a few clicks more, he also found the right match for his other two daughters, Farzana and Rihanna. Technology is very big. Computers are very happy with our children and we are very happy with our children. We are very happy with
Another online service that has made a huge difference in the lives of the people of Dhar is the cyber connection to the district hospital. <laughs> Thirty-year-old Muni Bai has been suffering from an ailment for a long time, but could not go to the hospital, which was quite a distance away. But now she can go to the Sardarpur village clinic, from where Dr. M. L. Jain is able to email her symptoms to the specialists at the district hospital. Various segments and sections of the society were coming forward and uh, using the information technology. In this whole aspect, the people who were more important, most important in uh, convincing the community about the information technology were teachers and students. Uh, we have uh, uh, primary school, middle school, high school students and also teachers of these schools and colleges. They were very, very uh, uh, useful in taking this message uh, to the community. And the community responded uh, earlier with some kind of uh, reserved response, but later when they realized it's beneficial to them, they, were be they became the agent of uh, perpetuating the whole concept to the different corners of the society. By far, the most enthusiastic response to this infotech movement has come from the children of Dhar. Eight-year-old Shweta walks two kilometers every Sunday to attend this computer education program called Head Start. The Madhya Pradesh government runs 924 of these Head Start schools where the village children experience interactive learning. Deftly steering the mouse, Shweta very easily goes through a spelling test, even as the speakers blare out a nursery rhyme. Children are enormously enthusiastic. Uh, eighth, eighth class or tenth class, within about 15 days, they master the technology. It's amazing to see their ability. In fact, if they take more than 10 or 12 days, they are very apologetic. I'm very sorry, I've taken more days to learn the technology. <laughs> so our uh, rural people, their uh, their intellectual capacity has been underestimated and whether semi-literate or literate they can absorb technology like fish to water. There are still many hurdles in the way before we can have a full-fledged digital revolution but it is clear that if the poor people have a means of accessing information then this digital empowerment will go a long way towards raising the quality of life in villages. Information technology, if it makes a difference in the life of an average Indian, poor Indian, particularly rural women and men, then the technology will be a blessing. Otherwise, it will be a blessing for a few people, not to the 100 crores of people of this country. Back in the fishing village of Viram Patinam, as Ramakrishnan comes out of his house, the loudspeakers are predicting stormy seas for the day. Alternative plans are quickly made. They know that the magic box in the shop will let them know when they can get back to work.